Hello, everybody. Welcome to Video Land Express Live with your host, Frankie Sun, me, and my partner here, Mark. Hello, double check everything, make sure it's, uh, it's all clear on the monitor. I'm looking on the side there. And right behind me is my Google Plus page, my Godzilla community. Uh, I finally decided to show it. Let me see if I can get out of the way there. That's the, that, yep, the big old, big green guy. That's it. That's Godzilla. Godzilla. That's the Godzilla page. Uh, so maybe we can uh, um, scroll a little bit up, and show some of the, uh, yeah, S some of the artwork that people have been doing. We can bring that right up. Yeah. So that's a Godzilla page that I set up and, uh, you know, reviews and artwork and uh, a lot of things that people put up. Somebody put up a Godzilla for Halloween. Okay. Um, Godzilla Nemesis. The rumor is out that Godzilla does fight another monster. Okay. And that's all the different artwork that the fans have been putting up and a lot of great stuff. I'm really proud of these guys. Uh, and they're really into it. And uh, you have to join Google+. Plus. It's like uh, joining Facebook. You join Google+. Plus and you can uh, join our com uh, Godzilla community page and see all the artwork and all the different things that people uh, are sharing together. I think that site is awesome. We are up to 138 members. And it's, you know, every week somebody keeps adding on and, you know, they join, they join us. And uh, it's pretty cool. So let's get right to the show because uh, I had a show um, a couple, well, maybe two months ago, and I, I showed this, Famous Monsters. Okay, it is Halloween show, uh, Creature Features, and I forgot to uh, show this uh, last time. So let me go right to it. And there's an article in here of Godzilla versus the Werewolf. True story, uh, a bunch of guys who worked on the Toho Pictures, the crew, on the weekends, they, get, uh, they actually made a Godzilla suit, and they made a werewolf uh, shoot. It's like a 10-minute uh, little sequence that they made a lot of years ago. The article goes uh, more deeply in an explanation of the making of, and it's been making uh, as well as the, the conventions, and uh, Godzilla conventions, and G-Con convention, G-Fest convention, and it was also shown on one of the San Diego um, conventions and stuff like that. So you might want to take a look at it. Uh, this is a, I believe the article starts on uh, page 58-59 on the Famous Monsters magazine. I promise a, co a couple of people I show that. Okay, a um, couple of little tidbits real quick. And uh, my partner here has, has a bunch of reviews to give you, okay? Uh, don't forget, um, Radio Night Space is not on uh, YouTube. I'm just looking at the monitor, make sure that you can see this, no reflection. Okay, this is Pumpkinhead. Um, and this was done, Stan Wilson, he directed this and he passed away. This is the only feature that he did, but we have clips and interviews of this on our, um, on our YouTube page. Yes, v uh, Vidal Express is finally on YouTube. Actually, it was named something else. Google went ahead and changed it to Vidal Express to meet the favor, no problem. Okay, and uh, let's, not let's not forget old classic Mad Monster Party. This finally came out on Blu-ray, and it has uh, all your favorite of uh, Frankenstein, Dracula, Werewolf, and everybody knows there's a brand new TV series um, uh, of Dracula on Friday nights now. Um, is that going to be a huge hit? Well, besides um, Walking Dead, that Mark has something to, to add to that in a second. And what's the other thing? Of course, everybody loves Pacific Rim, and everybody's still waiting for the word of the sequel, and that should be coming up. Uh, he does uh, mention in the commentary, um, how much he loves uh, the work of Ray Harry Hewson. He had help from James Cameron, Alfonso uh, Cohen, who did Gravity, the director of that. He uh, gave some input onto the making of the movie. Uh, definitely listen to the commentary. His love for big uh, giant creatures, Godzilla. It's uh, the it's all over the commentary. He really shows his um, his love for the uh, for that art form. And if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it. Okay, last but not least, a lot of people don't realize that world. Of, I mean, uh, oops, I was. Jumping ahead myself. World of the Worlds. Everybody thinks Halloween, Creature Features, right? Is because Halloween got uh, put on the face mark is because um, Awesome Worlds did a radio show back in the 30s. And he talked about an invasion of, um, of Martians on the planet Earth in New Jersey. Of course, the, the remake by, um, by Steven Spielberg and Tom Cruise uh, specified that, that Ed Dallas landed in New Jersey. Okay, that was a lousy bad remake. This is the classic commentary by Bob Burns. Uh, he's the fanboy from uh, back in the 1950s. He's, uh, he collects all these different artifacts. And you, you, you put him down in, uh, on YouTube, you see a lot of interviews with him and uh, the commentary. 
uh, excuse me, the commentary with Bob Burns and Joe Dante, the director of Gremlins, and the other commentaries by the two actors, Eugene Barry uh, who, and his uh, actors there, and they were still uh, around to do a commentary for this. And because of this, uh, World of the Worlds is what actually put Halloween on the map. A lot of people would beg to differ. I beg to differ is because also when I was doing a radio show that everybody remembers Halloween night. The new generation probably doesn't know that, but the old generation always remember World of the Worlds and Halloween goes together. Um, I'm going to be talking more about that on a Black Talk radio show. That's on Wednesdays um, at 9 p.m. Um, and one last thing before M Mark takes over. This morning found out famous stuntman Hal Needham passed away. Um, now, why would I mention this on the show? Well, real Star Wars fans, right? That's right. Hal Needham and his, um, his Goomba, Burt Reynolds, came out with the biggest picture of the year, 1977, Smoking the Bandit until Star Wars showed up. But I believe that Smoking the Bandit was the second biggest picture behind Star Wars, and I'll need him, in, excuse me, I'll need him, uh, was the ultimate stuntman. Um, and as a matter of fact, they did a picture called Cannonball Run that had an ensemble cast. Uh, I believe you can find clips on that on YouTube. I had an ensemble cast uh, starring, that's right, Roger Moore playing himself, writing in an Aston Martin. At that time, he was the big James Bond of the deal. And Jackie Chan. Uh, because of this movie, Jackie Chan does not like to be in a movie uh, of an ensemble cast. That's why they try to get him for uh, Expendables, and he keeps turning uh, Stallone down. He's a, you know, they're both great friends, uh, Stallone and Jackie Chan. They did a movie together with Whoopi Goldberg. I forgot the name of it. It was a goofing on Hollywood. But... Uh, because of that, uh, you know, Jackie Chan needs to be center of attention. I mean, that's the why he's the most popular, you know, Asian artist in the world. And, um, you know, that's why he, he's, not, he's a little bit iffy about Expendables. I, again, I'm answering a question. I got Jackie Chan didn't do Expendables. But anyway, um, so uh, I definitely uh, recommend this. And this is old school. This is before all that CG uh, wire work. So... Uh, if anybody wants to add to anything to this, you can feel free to call us. Do we have the phone number up? There we go. So feel free to interrupt us anytime you feel like it. Now, the reason I'm leading up to that is because um, Escape Plan came out with a, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I forgot to mention incredible stories as told by the real man of action. Arnold Schwarzenegger wrote the intro to the book. I forgot to mention. And... Apparently, nobody was interested in um, uh, uh, Stallone and Arnold being in the same movie together. I finally caught up to Machete, which is basically a big goof from Jay's Bond. That came out at number four two weeks ago. Uh, Mark did the review on that. Four, it went down to number 12. It disappeared off the top 20 already. Escape Plan, the same thing. Came out at number four. It's off the top 10 this week. And the second week is already off the top 10. Um, all I can say, I, because I mentioned this on my Black Talk radio, uh, radio show this past Wednesday, um, I guess Macho Films are out, so Expendables might be having a hard time in that third movie getting any box office uh, attraction because apparently everybody wants to do um, it's uh, Star Wars, um, anything related to science fiction. Science fiction made a big comeback this year. Uh, and then, of course, superheroes. Mar uh, Marvel, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they made an announcement they're going to have more TV productions than superheroes. And hopefully there'll be room for the big guy. Now, let's go to the uh, box office, okay? And... What's the latest movie you've seen, Mark? Okay, the latest movie I saw was uh, Bad Grandpa. How was that? It was pretty funny. It was so pretty much, if you saw the preview, you pretty much saw the whole film. It, it would just expand from the funniest moments in the show were actually, in the movie, were actually on the trailer. It's sort of like uh, what would you, you would see if you saw Jackass or any of the Jackasses where you have Johnny Knoxville dressing up like Grandpa, and he basically just extends that whole role without the other cast members and it just focuses basically on two characters him and and the the, the kid he plays his, his grandson so overall if you like jackass you'll like this film i didn't see too many people in the audience you know because it was probably i went on a matinee so right. they went out and this is the first day uh, the second day it's out which it would today would be saturday i was a saturday matinee i didn't see too many people there most of the people in this in the audience were males uh, between the ages of, you know, 30 and, and 40, would give or take. And it basically, if you see Jackass, you love Jackass, you, you've watched all their productions, you'll like this. It's the same kind of humor. It's uh, yeah. like a bunch of skits, basically, put together? Yeah, it's basically like a bunch of skits. It's so they have one, the whole premise of it, you know, like they, they call it the MacGuffin. The MacGuffin is, 
is a gr bad grandpa, Johnny Knoxville, is taking his grandson from one corner of the state to the other corner of the state to leave it with his uh, son-in-law, mm -hmm. you know, who, where his daughter is going to prison for, I guess, uh, breaking parole, using drugs. So she leaves her, her uh, son with her father, who's Johnny Knoxville, and it continues from that line. And, and then it all basically becomes the same thing like Jackass. You know, all skits, all pranks played upon other people where Johnny Knoxville takes hit, hit, hit after hit, mm -hmm. head injury after head injury, <laughs> uh, pushing <laughs> the boundaries till someone eventually just knocks him out. Okay. Well, it's funny because that's going to be the number one picture this weekend, believe it or not. I can before, believe A week before Halloween. And the movies that's still uh, uh, around in the top ten is Gravity, Captain Phillips, The Consular, uh, with an all-star cast. I really got bad reviews. You didn't see that one, right? No, no, but I, I bet you if you see the, the trailer, you pretty much get the whole premise of the film. And if it's getting bad reviews, the, I'm sorry to say, the story on the trailer looks very uninteresting. I mean, just from the trailer alone, it's sort of like they put the, they try to scrounge the best part of the film and they couldn't find it. There's not one person in the movie I would say that I cared about, even though you have uh, Harry M. Bardeen, uh, you have all these other actors who are very, you know, acclaimed, but it's just, I didn't care. What uh, was ironic, though, uh, is that uh, Bad Grandpa with his automatic uh, built-in audience versus the jackass audience, and you got all these, you got an all-star cast, um, Michael F uh, Fassbender, you got Brad Pitt, uh, Jareem, uh, I never say that name. Javier Vardim. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and they got a bunch of other people, and that's at number four. So it goes to show you the star power is very weak at the box office. Yeah. I mean, Johnny, uh, Johnny Depp proved it with Lone Ranger. You know, DOA and Arrival on 4th of July. How the hell could that happen? You know? maybe, maybe they should have given over to Quentin Tarantino. This is what I'm thinking. <laughs> if you would have made something out of uh, the movie with, with Jamie Foxx, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a Western, imagine what would have he would have turned the Lone Ranger into. But in the meantime, he probably would have told that to a, a cold classic again. Well, the, well, the funny thing is, that he put The Lone Ranger in his top ten favorite movies of the year. Go figure that one out. I would <laughs> like to see his slant on it. <laughs> if, if, if Disney cares, <laughs> if they care about The Lone Ranger, give it to him. Let's see his slant on it. And don't expect it to be PG for kids. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Look at uh, <laughs> uh, the, the last movie he did. Yeah. Um, okay, and how about uh, Captain Phillips? Uh, I didn't see the film. You know, you basically see the trailers. It's hysterical. The more you get into films, the more you see these trailers, you basically get the whole concept of the movie. You know, he, he survives, of course. I hope that's not a big spoiler to everybody, but he survives in the movie. Well, basically, <laughs> it, it, it is based on a true story. <laughs> I, I really got a, a kick out of this because, I mean, uh, on my review, on my blog uh, Black Spot page. That's my blogger page, by the way. Uh, and I update that. I forget to mention that at the top of the show. Uh, if, uh, every Monday, I put up a bunch of uh, news clips. And um, uh, I'm, on Tuesday, I usually do little mini reviews. I gave um, Captain Phillips a three. Mainly really? because the picture was a little bit too long. It should have been a good 90-minute movie. But You're saying three out of ten? Uh, uh, no, three out of five. Oh, okay. uh, that, that's my rating. So thanks for correcting me on that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like one to five, just like uh, you know the, the newspapers good. do. Um, uh, it, it gets a solid three. Tom Hanks, his performance, he sells it, uh, especially uh, at the end. Now, oh, he does live. Spoiler. Oh my God! I can't believe you're spoiling the movie. I spoiled the movie. He lives at the end. Well, it is based on the book. They should have <laughs> done a twist. I think they should have done a twist <laughs> in the movie and have Captain Phillips write the book at the end where he dies. He says, and then and in the end of the movie they killed me yeah well uh, the the thing was it reminded me a lot of Argo okay directed mm -hmm. by Ben Affleck where it creates the tension everybody who saw um, Argo knows that uh, basically they got away at the end right they get on the plane and they, they get out of the country the plane flies away and they get to safety right at the, and Argo in the movie Ben Affleck said, okay, I got the audience in suspense. Let me just drive it right home. And uh, all of a sudden, the, the bad guys get in the Jeep and they chase the plane on a runway. And that was an artistic license. It was, uh, it was his uh, call. It was his choice. I said, well, I, I want to end it on a, on a hyper note. Uh, because going on a, on a um, you know, skipping on the plane, we mm -hmm. were free, it was kind of a wimpy ending. So he wanted to really, the, you, know, sell, you know, make a home run with it. So you're saying they should have Hollywooded and just made it seem like there was a, a machine gun battle <laughs> on the airport, right? <laughs> and, and a couple of people die right before they get on the plane and then they escape. 
Right. <laughs> but he kept it realistic because he kept, he kept that tension going. But uh, the thing is, that's what they did with Captain Phillips. You still feel the tension all throughout the whole movie. And at the end, say, wait, wait, uh, Captain Phillips does live. That's, uh, I mean, the guy lived. He wrote the book, which is what the movie is based on. Is he going to die at the end? And it, it keeps you uh, gripped all the way th uh, through the whole movie. If it was a little bit shorter, it would have been better. That's the only thing. Thing I gotta say, Paul Greengrass uh, really did a great, a great job in directing. I just thought it should have been sh uh, shorter. That's why I kind of downgraded down to a, a three. But Tom Hanks at the end there, oh boy, he falls apart, and he really goes in for his uh, uh, Oscar nomination. I won't tell you how, what the scene is exactly, but he gets saved, and you know he goes for his Oscar moment, and oh my god, he nails it. I gotta admit, that's it. Uh, gotta give it to Tom Hanks. Um, so you're saying that there's Oscar buzz on Tom Hanks for. Uh, he deserves for it for that movie. Yeah, there the is an, uh, there is a buzz on him, and I think he he deserves it. Yeah, he does uh, really deserve the nomination. We both haven't seen Twelve Years a Slave. Everybody's talking Oscar buzz. I just want to give a little footnote on that because I'm I'm going to go and talk about Gravity a second. But um, some people do not want to see the movie because of the violence. Okay, the whipping, rape, and all that stuff. Okay, we have an alternative. A violent movie, believe it or not. And the character is called Solomon Northrop, if I'm saying that correctly. Well, believe it or not, this movie is a remake. Twelve Slaves, Twelve Years a Slave is a remake, believe it or not. The movie was produced by PBS Playhouse, American Playhouse, in 1984, starring Avery Brooks. That's right, our beloved Captain Sisko for uh, DS9, okay? And you can find this movie, okay? It's called Solomon Northrop Odyssey. Okay, uh, and the picture is really clean PG. Okay, um, there, there's one whipping, but it's off screen. You just hear the sound. Okay, back in 1984, that was a big deal on TV. Okay, compared to like The Walking Dead uh, on cable, where you had um, a body count of testers all over the place. But anyway, this was really clean PG movie. You can find this on your own on the internet. Um, um, here it is. You know, TV Guide. Okay. Is O V Guide like O as an Oscar? O V Guide dot com, and there's a search. When you get to that page, there's a search there. You type in Solomon Northrop Odyssey. How you spell Solomon Northrop? Look it up on IMDb. T uh, type in Twelve Years a Slave, and you um, uh, forget the the actor's name who's uh, uh, portraying the new Solomon Northrop, and you see the spelling of that name. Uh, and that actor, they're saying, is going to get a nomination. Oh, Oscar buzz. Another Oscar buzz, right? And you heard it here. <laughs> there you go. And, of course, everybody, I, I looked at this actor. He looks so familiar. And then, of course, he's the one who did 2012, the, the picture by Roland Emmerich, the, the, the disaster picture. But he did another picture. If you want to see, if you don't want to see 12 Years a Slave, is he a good actor? Well, I can base it on this movie. It's called Kinky Boots. Right now, that's been turned into a Broadway show uh, by Cindy Lauper, who wrote all the, the she wrote the book, meaning she wrote the music and uh, and the lyrics and the whole storyline. Kinky Boots, uh, that's available on Netflix and everything. Is it the, oh, the only thing kinky is the title? Okay, it's a very straight uh, drama. Is a thing of the, the full Monty. Um, you know, they live in a town. Uh, it, um, uh, it, uh, the you know the economy is really bad, and uh, what happens is basically. Um, uh, they, uh, the, the guy owns a, uh, um, uh, owns a shoe shop, and they, uh, they're ready to you know, close down the shop. And the guy comes in. He's a, he's a cross-dresser, right? And he says, listen, make some nice kinky boots that people like, and we can, you know, the fact that we keep alive and be, uh, keep employed. The picture is called Kinky Boots. I definitely recommend it if you, if you want to see the, uh, the broad range this actor can do. Uh, I haven't seen 12 Years a Slave. I can see him getting an Oscar nomination for this. And I said, feel free to interrupt us anytime you want. Give us a call, and we have a phone call on the air. Yep. Go, go ahead, call, call. Hey. Are you there? How are you doing? Hello, guys. Can you hear us? Is anybody? Well, he'll, he'll get there. He's here. He's here. He's here. A good right. show. Um, yes, we hear you now. Want to ask you about the Expendables, the Sylvester Stallone? Why aren't those movies ever on, like, HBO and stuff, those uh, Expendables movies? I never see them come out on the uh, channels like Showtime and HBO. And well, they're, the, they the, come like, out on Netflix. Special arrangement where you keep them to make profits on them or something? No, no, I see them on Netflix right now. There are Netflix, uh, Expendable 1 and Expendable, I think Expendable 2, or just Expendable 1 right now, is on Netflix. Uh, do you have Netflix? Okay, I guess you're, you're on. You're gone. But speaking about 
uh, Expendables, speaking about Schwarzenegger, uh, speaking about Stallone. I did happen to see Ex Escape Plan. I right. think, did we talk about it last week? No, no, no okay. we didn't. Like, like I, would, I would like to say, if you saw the trailers for the ex Escape Plan, you basically saw the whole movie. You basically get the concept. It, it tries to have a twist ending, but for some reason or another, it, it, it almost is impossible to hide uh, such a twist with two actors of such note as Schwarzenegger and Stallone. You would immediately have to believe by just seeing the trailers that both these people have some kind of vested interest in, in the major role of this film. So it, it almost doesn't, it's almost impossible to, to uh, be, you know, surprised. You basically see the right. trailer, you say, there's got to be a reason for both of these people to be here. Right. You know, if there's a twist ending, they're both involved. So, like I said, if you see the trailer, it's, it's no, it's no uh, Prisoner. If you've seen the, the movie Prisoner by right. Hugh Jackman, where there is really some level of work done to the development of a twist. Right. That one, I didn't see it coming. I saw the, the trailer for it, and I did not see it coming. But Escape Plan, boom, telegraphed, saw it coming. It was like, a, a, like, like trying to get a, a punch from Stallone. It was telegraphed, I saw it coming. I, I ducked. Oh, okay. I saw the movie. I saw. I understood what was going on. I turned off my brain and just enjoyed. Basically, uh, the the twist is a little variation of uh, John Travolta and um, uh, and Nicolas Cage face off. They they kind of kept that idea. Well, I won't say what it is if you haven't seen the movie. But I still uh, <laughs> I, I still like Escape Plan. That what, what makes the movie work is Arnold. He doesn't take the the shit seriously. You know, he's in it for the ride. He's having fun with it. He goes a little bit crazy in the cage to uh, yeah. uh, distract attention from the guards. Yeah. So Stallone can you know do his little thing on the side without. You mean like an Oscar thing. moment? It looks like he was trying to perform an Oscar moment in that movie himself. He gets into German. He starts yeah, he uh, speaks uh, German. riffing. Yeah, he starts riffing. Yeah, he's like saying, <laughs> "I'm going to get an Oscar no matter what." I got to do right <laughs> but he pulled i think you, uh, arnold really <laughs> saves the movie I, I, I again i gave this movie a three out of five if you're old school stallone and uh, and, um, uh so 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 right so a fan uh but again this movie is already off the top 10 it just came out and uh these guys uh. don't uh, don't have the power for this you know i guess everybody's just too wrapped up about uh, superheroes well, I think I think the, the the problem is when you have two people of such high note, you have to have them do something, because they take your attention, and and, and the, at the level of their fame, if it doesn't reach the level of the writing, then you you're bored with it. Right. That's why Expendable works, because Expendable works with a huge cast of people who are famous, and it's a gun-toting uh, blast. You know, explosions. That's why that movie works. Because they, they may not have too much of a, a plot or premise, but everybody is showcased and on an ensemble-like uh, stage. And that's why it works, I think. And, and, and no, other, no other movie proved it this year. Without, uh, without 3D, without uh, <laughs> Super IMAX, whatever you call it, and that's Fast and the Furious. Vin, Vin Diesel in the crowd, everybody had their moment yeah. in the movie. M Michelle Rodriguez, of course, she's the female uh, lead part, of course. Not one, but two big major fight scenes she's given in the movie. Right. Okay, uh, so and that that movie works on all levels. Yes. Okay, uh, all different nationalities. Okay, white, black, Asian, or whatever else is in the mix there. Mm -hmm. uh, you got the cars. You got a big uh, some oh, some good action stunts. Yeah, uh, you know, action sequences. You got speed, set pieces. Yeah, speed's good. You got, you got the speed, cars. Speed everything. And you got an, an outrageous ending like the other uh, the previous movie. Uh, they're dragging a two ton safe down the the, the streets of uh, of uh, Brazil and stuff yeah, like real. that. Uh, Rio. Well, actually, that was uh, Puerto Rico, but that's another yeah, thing. Well, you know. And and then in this case, Hollywood. that's Hollywood <laughs> for you. In this case, uh, they're having a big fight on the plane on the world's longest runway. Wow! I mean, this thing was uh, about it was like amazing. Yeah. I so when is plane? It plane? was. It was like watching uh, the WWE, <laughs> right? And one in one scene, it, it's sort of like a tag team with Vin Diesel and The Rock going up against uh, two guys who are or, who are matching strength. It's amazing. Right. So it's all like you're watching the WWE, like they would break it down for you with a, like a, what do you call that one? A tag team match. A tag team match. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. And That's it, great. And the film delivered. Yes. Right. You know, you just turn off your brain, uh, suspend belief, and you can enjoy it. Okay, two more things on the, on the list here. Uh, uh, gravity. 
I still think Sandra Bullock, um, just like Tom Hanks saved Captain Phillips, you know, he's owed the attention. I think Sandra Bullock uh, really pulled it off. I think she's going to get an Oscar nomination. Ooh, she, Oscar buzz. Another Oscar buzz. I think <laughs> she, she's going to hold that gravity. Yep. Um, now, let's just end the movie on Creature Features, okay? Um, basically... Let's end with Walking Dead. Walking Dead is finally in the third, fourth episode. Ooh. And what do you think of the show so far? Oh, it's great. Uh, they're on their fourth season. If you happen to ca you know, catch on Netflix, you can catch all, third se all three seasons. Uh, the first season was great. You know, it was building up to it. The second season, like I always like to tell people, it seems like the actor studio where they're just pontificating between each other. Eh, it's a dead season. Uh, then the third season, they go back to what, they were originally but it departs from the comic book the comic book if you read the comic book if you're into comic books right you're into comic books right graphic novels uh, yeah yes. graphic novels you mm -hmm. read it it's intense it's gr it's a lot grittier uh, there's more acts of violence death dismemberment if you you've already seen the third season i don't want to spoil too much for you but people die left and right it's a it's a horror show but on on the uh version of, of the amc walking dead they, they, you know, they make it more of a dramatic. The third season tries to get back on board, but it's a departure from the uh, graphic novel. That's why I, I wonder why they don't do that with every movie. They can even do that if they're going to start departing from the actual writings of it, like they do, uh, what do you call it, Orange is a New Black. They depart from the written book. Right. After they said, after the third episode, it departs from the book and goes off some on a different tangent, mm -hmm. stuff that didn't really happen. So why don't they do that with Captain Phillips? I say, you know, hey, right. you know the truth, but let me just tell you a Catholic, uh, Captain Phillips story. Uh, in the end, I die. I get killed, <laughs> and that's the end, right. and, you know, there's no happy ending. Well, let me <laughs> ask you, the, um, because I, have, I only read, the, uh, like, the first book in the, in the graphic novel, Walking Dead. Yes. And then I heard that, uh, the, you know, the, the TV show just goes in all different oh directions. Oh, God, yes. Now, all the major characters sooner or later die in the graphic novel. Is that true? Uh, I don't want to spoil for me, but yes. Everyone, the major characters die left and right. It's hysterical. It's like the graphic mo novel, there's acts of rape, violence, death, dismemberment. In this TV series, uh, there was supposed to be this rape scene, but I think it was too graphic for television. Mm -hmm. So instead, there was a humiliating disrobing. Okay. A character's humiliated and disrobed. I mean, oh good. my okay. God, that's terrible! Uh, I was humiliated. I, it, it felt like I was in high school. Like they, 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 <laughs> they made the fat kid take off his shirt. You know, <laughs> sort of like that. Uh, the uh, other guy, the other character, he gets a good beating. Uh -huh. But I mean, from what, from the beating he gets, it didn't look that bad. Right. To tell you the truth, I mean, all he got was a black eye, and he started bleeding a little. But in in the graphic novel, it's severe. It's mm -hmm. a severe beating. You know, the governor is a rapist. Right. Oh, well, I, I, three I, minutes. We got to roll up. No, well, I guess that. Well, we got all the information. We try to squeeze in as much information. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Godzilla community page is right up yeah. there. Join Google Plus. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll see you guys on. You can hear me on Black Talk Radio Wednesdays at uh, at eight p.m. I was gonna say.